Welcome to Salnara's Minis. Today we're going to continue to paint the Jade Obelisk, but before we do that, it would be really helpful to me if you could hit the like or subscribe button as I am a new YouTuber and could use the help in moving forward. As you can see, uh, the grayscale has been finished and currently the minis are on a turntable for you to take a look at. Plan for today, or actually over the week, in order to make this video that you can see, was to paint these 10 miniatures in several stages. Stages started out with skin, moving on to the stone mask, then the cloth, and then the wood on the weaponry, the metal of the armor, and the metal implements, and the leather. As you can see, these are the colors that I used for this session. The only colors that did not make it into this video is Army Painters, Moldy Clothes, and Reaper Minis, Master Paints, Maggot Skin. There is one tube of paint on its side that you can see behind the Army Painter Speed Paints, and that is an artist grade white. So we're gonna start off today by painting the skin, and I'm not gonna show you every single model. It would make this video incredibly long. Instead, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through and do a representation of different skin tones and different stages so that you can see what I did. Um, I started out with a Caucasian skin tone and moved on from there. Um, there is three different skin tones over three different models. Please enjoy until we get to the next stage.
after finishing the skin tones, I moved on to the jade stone aspects of the models. This included all the masks, several of the weapons slash instruments used by several of the band members, the priestess amulet, and the large obelisk on the back of one of the models. For this, I used Army Painter's Orc Skin, which is a rich and vibrant green color. Because it's a speed paint, the sketch highlights and shades are easily seen, making this step easier and making it quicker to move on to the next one. After finishing the jade stone, I moved on to the lower robes of each of the nine cultists. For this, I base layered the robes with Reaper Miniatures Master Series Paint Troglodyte Tan. After I completed the base layer, I moved on to shading the recesses with a paint versus a shade. For this I used a light brown in order to keep the colors close in coloration. After I finished applying the light brown into the shaded areas, any areas that had accidentally been hit by this brown I recoated with the troglodyte tan. After the cleanup I went and added a little bit of titanium white to the tan and highlighted the upper ridges of the folds and areas that I felt white would hit. After that stage was done, I went ahead and added small rips, tears, or texture to the cloth in areas I felt needed it or would look appealing.
After the cloth was finished, I moved on to the wood handles of each of the tools slash weapons used by the cultist. I used a army painter oak brown as the base layer and coated each of them until I had an opaque finish. After the initial base layer was done, I added a little bit of the Reaper Miniatures Master Series paint troglodyte tan to lighten it up and added a few different levels of highlights on the weapons and the tools. After finishing the wood sections, I went around with a light gray slash white to clean up any areas that I had accidentally painted onto that I should not have. After that stage, I moved on to doing the metal sections on each of the cultists. For this, I used Army Painter Speed Paint Runic Gray. I went over each of the shoulder pauldrons, the chest plate and the plates going down the abdomen, metal areas on the weapons, the tools, quiver, and on the spikes of the armor. Ultimately, this paint is fairly transparent and I had to do at least two coats to get good coverage. And in areas I wanted a little bit darker, I ended up doing three coats. This would form the basis of the non-metallic metals that I would use in this warband. Once the metallic areas had been covered with the runic gray, I moved on onto the softer leather aspects of the model. This would cover the boots, the belts, um, and the leather cloaks or capes that several of the models wore, as well as the priestess's, priestess's upper chest covering. For this I used Armour Painter Speed Paint Hardened Leather. Uh, 
is a wonderful color in my opinion for this sort of thing. I also use this on the quiver. Uh, once I had this on the models and allowed it to dry, I moved on and added a skin tone to this color to give me a much lighter hue to allow areas to look like they were stressed or well worn. And once I put that layer down, I moved on to another lighter brown called Banshee Brown by Army Painter and use this to do small scratches and dots to show where the leather had been scuffed or ultimately worn down fairly thin. For the hair of the priestess and the cultus carrying the obelisk, I used um, GW's contrast paint, Saigor Brown. Uh, again, this showed up really well over the initial sketch I had done on each of these models. Uh, no further highlight or shading was really needed to be done with these. And um, from there, I moved on to the next stage. For this stage, I went around to each of the handles of the knives and the swords as well as the small skulls each of the cultists carried on various implements and the bones at the base of the priestess's pedestal with army painter's skeleton bone. It's a very basic ivory color and I also then changed over to um, GW's Calador Sky in order to paint in each of the fletchings. After that, I moved on to the armor uh, again in order to make it look a little bit better. It was looking a little lackluster when I kind of looked at it after walking away from it for a good eight hours and decided it needed a little bit of a higher highlight than what it had on each of the metal parts. Uh, for this, I used Army Painter's Gorgon Hide, which is a very light bluish gray color. Um, I went around to various aspects of the armor and other metal implements and just started to provide um, an additional highlight in areas I felt it needed to be brightened up. Any area that I felt was too bright and I needed to provide a transition zone or to tone it down a bit, I just watered down a little bit of runic gray and kind of brushed that on the edges as kind of a intermediary color between the original and this new brighter highlight. After I had finished adjusting the metal, I went and started to paint in various miscellaneous aspects of the models. As you can see here, right now I'm working on the cord holding the priestess's bird skull for a zinch. Um, and as you can see, you could see briefly in her hand, she had a heart that I had also painted. Um, that was one of these miscellaneous items that I did not add in as this video would have been way too long. 
Uh, you can also see that I'm going in and I'm providing a light um, highlight on the mask where the cracks are. Uh, this was to try to just get these to be a little bit more prominent. Um, the color uh, Mega Skin was a little too um, bright, so I toned it down again with the Omni Painter Speed Paint Orc Skin. Um, after that, I went and continued on more miscellaneous items. Um, this is another cord um, that was not quite yet painted, and I was trying to figure out what color to use. I ended up with um, fur brown from an army painter in order to stay within the brown hues and not to make it too crazy. After finishing the cord in the Army Painter for Brown, I still had several areas that didn't have a color um, associated with them yet. Uh, since I'd already painted the heart red and I knew I had to paint the blood on the knife red, I went ahead and did the enlarged beads on that same cord. I did this um, in order to reduce the number of colors used on the model. Uh, to kind of keep it from getting too busy or crazy uh, with too many colors at once. Another odd thing that the priestess had that the other models did not have was a series of scars on her body. Uh, for this, I used Army Painter Scar Tissue. Just kind of went around and hit all the raised areas with this coloration.
after looking at the cord that I painted fur brown, I realized the item looked rather uninteresting. In order to help it out, I applied GW's Agrex Earthshade to it. One, to darken it down and provide shading in the deeper recesses. After the shade had dried, I went ahead and reapplied the fur brown to the raised areas. And after that dried, I mixed fur brown and a little bit of titanium white and did some edge highlighting upon it to increase the appeal of this region of the model. As the priestess is seen with a heart in her hand, I decided that some blood effects would be necessary to seal the overall look of this model. Uh, for this, I used blood for the blood god from G Games Workshop. Um, I started with applying a liberal amount over the heart and part of the arm and then I went ahead and did a splatter effect over the model to make it look like she had ripped this heart out of a victim and is holding up high as the heart was still pumping the liquid out. After the priestess I moved on to the cultist with the owls who also had a very large flat medallion in front of his chest which was in my mind a great place to do some freehand work so uh, this is just a very quick and easy freehand of a galaxy scene basically I painted the background black I had chosen uh, magento which in this case it was Omni Painter's Orc Blood and Deep Blue from the Blue Range and took some white paint put some on the brush and realized it was too dry so I had to go back moisten the brush get more paint and then start putting little dots on this medallion in order to seal the look of a galaxy you can see through it as if it was a small tiny portal in front of this cultist. And then we get to the last member of the Warband, a beast called Idol Ark. Um, this is not obviously a human cultist, um, but rather an aspect of Zinch for this Warband, or a intermediary, whatever you want to call him. Um, but for him, I used basically a limited palette. Um, I used for the initial base layer of the beak a yellow medium called Benzim Adelzolone. It's uh, from Golden Fluid Acrylics. Uh, it doesn't have an easy to say name, but it's basically a very like base yellow. Um, I also used um, Moonstone 
from Armor Painter, which is a oh, Moon Dust, I'm sorry, not Moonstone, um, which is a very light yellow as to mix and get a highlight in the big region when I get to that point. Um, as for the body, it's two main colors, Kalidar Sky from Games Workshop and Deep Blue from Army Painter. Um, Kalidar Sky is the brighter blue that you're seeing and then the deep blue will be like the very dark kind of blackish blue that you see me use on the body and part of the tentacles. Um, in order to highlight things up, um, I would mix the Kalidos Sky into the deep blue and for the Kalidos Sky I would use Army Painter's, again, Gorgon Hide. Um, and then for the spikes in the bone regions, I use Army Painter's <clears throat> Skeleton Bone. Um, and then I would highlight it up with Army Painter's Leashed Bone from their airbrush range. And then the very tips, I would use uh, the Titanium White Artist Grade paint that I had. So basically, this portion is me going back and forth and just starting the base colors and starting to mix the colors and starting to get highlights. Um, and then I would use some of these to provide texture in the skin or in the tentacles. Um, overall, this didn't take me too terribly long. I did want to go and take the time to show you my process. Since it is a single model, I can take a little more time instead of trying to do this with nine other human models. It's a good indication of some of my painting process and some of the back and forth that I do um, on each of the models. Hope you enjoy.
Okay, so I've learned a lot in this series of videos, uh, both in painting, because I had done some things I hadn't done before, but also just in doing the videos themselves. Uh, the first video, part one, I realized that my voice was a little too low uh, based on the percentage I had used, so I've turned it up a little bit. Hopefully people can hear me a little bit better. I'm pretty stoked about how these guys turned out. Um, I'm pretty happy with this style of non-metallic metal. Um, I've always kind of struggled a little bit more with that, but with the speed paints and the sketch, I think that that turned out really well. Pretty happy with the Army Painter paints, speed paints. Uh, those were a pleasure to work with as well. Um, I might have to get more in the future. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you did, and I'll see you next time.